and the topic today is now the right time to buy a home in the UK which is probably the thing that you search for. Before we go into the current market, let me explain. I've been involved in property for over 40 years. I've seen market increases, market falls. I've seen wars, recessions, crashes. And I've been able over the course of that 40 years to observe the dynamics of the market behavior. But that isn't the question. The question is, is now the right time to buy a home in the UK? Well, depending on where you're watching this from, you'll know there are a lot of geopolitical and geoeconomic factors in play at the moment. We have inflation, rising energy costs, war in the Ukraine, and unfortunately wars and conflicts all over the world, and political instabilities in the Far East. Many of these are driving factors for people to look for a stable, safe, place to live and indeed many people do have a right to live here even if they weren't born in this country there are many British passport holders all over the world who have a right to come here and live here so the question is is now the right time to do it well in the UK we have a massive undersupply of housing which might sound like a disincentive but actually it's a fairly good safety net, knowing that should you buy a home in the UK, even in high inflationary times, it's highly likely over a three, five, and certainly a 10 year spread that the increase in value of your property is going to outstrip UK inflation by a good margin. So your capital should be secure. Buying a home in the UK is fairly lengthy process, it's not like other legal systems in the world. You have to go through a whole process and appoint solicitors. But once you can get used to the idea that it may take up to six months, the decision should be straightforward. If you're buying a home in the UK and it's your only or main home, then you should only pay residential SDLT. If you're buying a larger property, particularly if you're coming here and buying a landed estate, then you may well not even have to pay that. You may have to pay what's called the mixed use or commercial rate, which is significantly lower. And more importantly, if you're retaining your overseas home for the time being, you will have to pay a 3% surcharge. And if you are coming to the UK from overseas and have been here less than six months when you purchase, you'll also require to pay a 2% non-resident surcharge. Now you can get both of those back, the 2% surcharge once you've been here more than six months, and the 3% surcharge once you've sold your former home of overseas. But they're significant cash flow costs, adding up to 5% to buying a home in the UK for a foreign buyer. But generally speaking, the management of these taxes and the cash flowing of them is a fairly straightforward process provided you get good advice. For those of you who are considering already British citizens and are wondering whether it's time to step onto the property ladder, the most important factor is going to be affordability. We keep seeing interest rate rises, we keep seeing that mortgage payments go up and that's got to be a scary time if you've never owned a property and you've only ever lived at home or possibly rented then you're not used to the idea that your monthly outgoings can go up and down depending on the interest rate. Personally, I lived through 17% annual interest rates in, in the 80s. And so to me, today's rates are actually cheap, but I recognize that in terms of the disposable income you have, you cannot afford to be in a situation where you can't make your mortgage payment. But similarly, you need to pay your electricity bill, your gas bill, and indeed you need to put food on the table. So what could you do to make sure that a sudden rise in interest rates or a long-term run on interest rates doesn't cause you to lose your home? Clearly going for a three-year fixed mortgage, possibly interest only, will keep those outgoings down to a minimum. Alternatively, you may be able to secure additional capital to pay down a larger deposit and that will allow you to borrow less, reducing your monthly outgoing. Or combine the two. The important thing is don't borrow 
more than you can afford to repay and do not expose yourself to variable monthly repayments if you can avoid it by getting a fix. It may cost you slightly more, but it will give you that stability and predictability that if you're already a renter, you're familiar with. You have a six month AST, you know what your rent is every month for at least six months. If you've got a half decent landlord, he may not increase the rent every six months because he likes having a good tenant. And that's the kind of security and stability you need when entering the property market as a first time buyer. Other than that, I believe, because property has always outstripped inflation right now, property is still a good investment. It's safe, it's stable, it's secure, and as I've said, provided you can service the debt, your home will rise in value faster than inflation. And of course, since your mortgage is a fixed amount, the value, the real value, I should say, of your debt is actually going down year on year. If your house rises 10% a year, then if you do the math, it's quite interesting. Your house nearly doubles in value over a six year run. But the value of your mortgage doesn't, the amount you owe. So loan to equity ratio, your loan to market value actually halves in highly inflationary times. In real terms, your debt is wasting away. Little factor that nobody's had to think about for a good few years because we've had low interest rates and low inflation, but certainly in the 70s and 80s and 90s, this was a regular part of your calculation. When you went to borrow 30,000 on a 50,000 pound house, and yes folks, they were that cheap in those days, you figured that your property will be worth 80,000 in three or four years, but your debt would still be 30. Put in 20, take out 50. Sounds to me as though you've made money. You have. In real terms, because of inflation, you probably haven't made 50,000 because the real value of that money's gone down. But the real value of that money has gone down less than the amount that the real cost of your mortgage has. Got any comments, questions, please leave them below. We'll do our best to answer them. If you've got any specific issues on buying a home, stamp duty, first time buyer's relief, feel free to contact us. We'd be more than happy to help you. And if you've paid stamp duty in the last four years on anything, please get in touch because you may have overpaid. Particularly if you're a more mature viewer and you've been sold your business premises to your pension scheme in order to extract some working capital, we're very aware that in most cases, stamp duty is being paid, almost certainly in error, and we can help you recover that. So click on the link below, come through to the website. If you like the video, click like and subscribe so you can receive further updates. And uh, I've been David Hanna. Thanks for listening.